What's up, guys? All right, let's see. Performance bonuses went to Kalani, Drain, Perez, and Turpin. They all won 10 grand. Congratulations to them. What's up, brother? Congrats on a nice, nice evening. Um, fun main event. You know, the beginning, there was some pausing. It kind of, dare I say, gave it that big fight feel. You know, you sort of like, oh, shit, what's going to happen here? And it ended with a fantastic knockout. Your thoughts and your reaction? It's one of the most vicious knockouts I've ever seen. And how about how loud that thing was, too, the slap. What's crazy, too, is I think that... Uh, you know, that, that fight was on its way to him losing on points because of the fouls if it kept going that way. He needed to get a knockout, and he delivered. That guy's a maniac. Yeah, we'll get on to him in a second. Have you noticed, I feel like sometimes when a guy fouls, you can sometimes see them, like, foul again and again. It's almost like they get in their own head and they make the same mistake. So for him to be able to turn that round with the last shot and actually get the knockout is, shows that, hey, you can make adjustments on the fly at this thing. 100%. Listen, th th this is our fourth event. This thing is six months old. And what you're starting to see now, and we were talking about it tonight, is uh, these kids are starting, these kids six months ago were doing this shit for free. You know what I mean? Now they're getting paid. They're making real money and, uh, uh, you know, quitting their jobs, training, losing weight, stopping smoking, stopping drinking, and whatever else they were doing. Because uh, now this is, this is getting real. And it's uh, safe to say that Austin is not the hardest guy to market. He'll kind of do that job for you if you need him to. What do you think you can see with him during the future? Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, as people start to get, I, I equate it to like the first time, you know, first couple times in the UFC. You got the spotlights on you for the first time. Then after a while, you start to feel like, all right, this is my house. I feel comfortable here now. I've been here. I've done this. This is going to start to happen with a lot of these kids. And, I mean, if you still get already, I mean, two events ago, you'd have thought nobody would beat AJ, right? Turpin comes out of nowhere. This kid just quit his job. And uh, Bisbing, I was just talking to Bisbing back there, and Bisbing was telling me how what he's noticed since, since one is that it's almost like these kids are becoming better people now uh, health-wise and everything else because – there's actually, they're starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel that there's a future in this thing. Well, that's the difference in, like, slapping someone for free and it turning into an official sport, right? It's the same thing with, with MMA when we first bought this thing. One of the things that drove Lorenzo crazy when we first bought the UFC was that everybody had a job. It's like, how can this feel like a real sport when everybody has a job? These guys have to work and do whatever. It used to drive Lorenzo crazy. Co-main event, thoughts on the stoppage? Looked like Crespo thought he could continue. Yeah, I mean, these are, I, listen, you know me, man. Back in the old days, going after the commission with everything. The commission has done a great job with figuring this sport out and, and how to regulate it and uh, how to ref it, how to judge it. They've done a really good job. This is all a huge work in progress. Work in progress. So, that said, this is event number four. If you're looking at this as a work in progress and you're learning something each time, what are your main takeaways from tonight's event? Let me tell you this. Everybody in this room has been involved in combat sports. You guys go to various fights around the world. The fucking production level on this show. Tell me any sport anywhere that's been around four fucking events that pulls off the production that we pull off. There's guys that have been around forever. As soon as the th slap is over, the replay is up on the screen and three different speeds over and over and over again. Where do you see that in any other, any other, the, the production level on this thing is off the fucking charts. It's incredible. This team that produces this show should win a motherfucking Emmy, okay? I'm, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. They should win an Emmy for this show. All right. Watch some of these boxing events that are on. I mean, Showtime is fucking horrible. Those guys suck so bad. You fucking guys could show up with your, with your fucking video cameras and do a better job than show. It's, seriously, it's the worst production in all of television. Fucking PBS has better fucking programming than Showtime. It's, it's, it's horrible. They should, everybody that works on that fucking show should be embarrassed. Next question. Have you thought about maybe doing some consulting work for them, maybe helping them out? There's no helping them out. They're, 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 those guys have been in this fucking longer than anybody, and they're the worst. 
They're the worst. That show is embarrassing. I would like to say, if you're talking about production side, I would like to praise you on your pacing. I like the fact that there's not a lot of waiting around. Like you get one in, straight on to the next one. You know. That's that. I mean, that's what we do in, in every. I mean, if you come to the Contender Series, the pace is fast. If you come to the UFC, the UFC, we have. You know, if we're on ESPN, we have to deal with commercials and things like that. But we always try to keep the thing moving. I mean, that's the thing too that you go to, you see in boxing. I mean, their walkout takes 45 minutes. Then once they get in there. They got to sing seven national anthems, and you know, there's 347 guys in the ring for I don't know what, and you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. Uh, two quick but ones. But thank you. Yeah. I agree with you. Uh, two quick ones outside of tonight that we forgot to ask you yesterday. Derek Lewis is out of contract with the UFC. I'm assuming he's a guy you'd like to keep around. Yeah, I, listen, I love Derek. Personally and professionally, love the guy. So, yes. It's done. There huh? you go. That was quick. There you and go. Last one for me. Is, uh, is Elon Musk ducking Zuckerberg? Is Elon Musk ducking Mark Zuckerberg? Ducking? Yeah. No. <laughs> You're talking about two of the richest, most powerful guys in the world. You're talking about a couple of eccentric billionaires, okay? Now, if you look at what it takes to put together a fight between two professional fighters who do it for a living, you know what I mean? You get it going. No, nobody's ducking anybody. Still on the cards? Still think it could happen? So, so I literally talked to Elon yesterday, and uh, I was with Zuckerberg two days ago. Yes. <laughs> got a date for us? or? Huh? Have you got an idea of when you'd like to do it? Working on it. Hi, Dana. Yep. Um, I'm just curious. Do you have an injury update on Paul? I think it's Teague. For, he looked like he had a, a hand injury. Do you yeah, know do what happened with him? I, I, uh, they sent me... Uh, let me see here. Hold on. Brianna sent me. Here's what's up with tonight's results. Um, huh? But there was nothing wrong with his hand, right? Okay. 180 down, cleared. Negative right hand x ray. Negative. Oh, and there's Paul Teague, too. 180 cleared. Negative right hand x ray. Yeah, everybody's good. Do you have any thoughts on the fact that um, a lot of people on social media were saying that he kind of faked that so that he wouldn't have to take the slap? Any thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> that's what it seemed like. Yeah. I hate the shit on the guy, but yeah, that's what it seemed like. And there were a couple slappers tonight that called for UFC fights. Is that something that you would be open to even Thinking about any of them coming over the UFC? I haven't at all. I'm thinking about them slapping. I'm not, I haven't thought about them fighting at all, no. Um, yeah, no. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, uh, sitting in the back talking to Nate, just, just as the interview started, you came over and, and congratulated him, said you got some texts from some bills. Just if you can touch on that real quick, and I got a couple others. Yeah, no, Buffalo's supporting the, the guy. It's, it's awesome. And uh, Dalton Kincaid. Hit me up. I think he posted about him, too, and, and Josh Allen were both supportive of him tonight. When you look at tonight's card and a lot of the names that are returners, some of the people that have been popular, obviously Koa has been well-known long before Power Slap. But for me, coming out of Power Slap 4. Turpin. The rising star was, well, Turp, yeah. But, but Turp's known. I, I, I think. Turp's on his, that, that was his third fight. This kid came out of nowhere. But I think Nate opened some eyes tonight. You think just Nate? Nate? Yeah. Oh, I agree. Well, they were the co-main and main event. I mean, uh, yeah, N Nate's a beast. I mean, just, just looking at the guy. He's, his, his hands are like two hands. And, and uh, But I think in my opinion, obviously Nate's incredible. I mean, he was the co-main event. But Terp, I mean, the guy doesn't look the part. Fucking lunatic. Absolute lunatic. Uh, I don't know how the hell he didn't have an aneurysm up there tonight. Uh, the way he was screaming, his face was bright red. And um, Hunter was even saying that he, Hunter felt like he kept clubbing because he was so <laughs> crazy and acting like a maniac. He, it's almost like he had to chill out a little bit to, uh, to land that slap. But let me tell you what, I think it was his coming out party tonight because the truth is he was – you know, murdering guys the last couple fights. The question was, could he take a slap from AJ? AJ's legit. He's a real guy, you know. And 
Yeah, he took two slaps from him. You uh, speaking, AJ coming out of one, I believe it was. You said that he was could be the rising and the breakout guy. Do you like after four power slaps the roster that you've assembled? Just the same way that you eye talent in UFC and see who your faces are going to be. Do you sort of like what's sort of formulating as the faces of power slap right now? Yeah, well, much like the UFC, um, you know, our matchmakers put put these fights together and find this talent. Same here, Erica and Frank go out there and find this talent. And, you know, we get into the war room and we start talking about who we're gonna line up, you know. And uh, after these type of events, now we get back together and we start lining up what's gonna happen for October. But Frank and Erica are the ones that are out there finding, finding these guys and finding the talent and then they come and download me uh, and Hunter on on who they are, and you know we 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 sort of put together what we think will be the best matches and who will be in line for the next title fights. One final so it's literally we we run this business just like we do the UFC. And one final question: Is is Nate in line for yeah. possibly Nate and Turk, fight? both of them? Yeah. yeah. Dana. Yep. Um, you've been around since AJ's first slap, so. You know, and he went five rounds with Ron, who's probably the best slapper on the planet. So, how, like, what was your action when Turpin slapped him? I know. I, I Listen, I was really excited tonight to see how he was going to do with AJ. Now I can't wait to see him, you know, him and Wolverine. That's fucking crazy. This kid comes out of nowhere, and he's going to be going up. He, he beat one of the best in the world tonight. And who knows? I mean, this kid could be could, could – be, uh, a dominant force in this sport. Um, obviously, a super heavyweight title is probably coming. Um, is there any date? Like, are you trying to rush that? Or because um, the crazy Hawaiian was said that he doesn't feel like there's anybody that for him to fight, like fight for the title. Do you agree? There's always somebody to fight. This is this is the shit that they used to say to me back in the day in the UFC. Ah, oh, there's nobody. F believe me. And, and the more so tonight, we launched our video game. Uh, mobile app video game. We're number one in all of sports. We're number four in all of video games. So when you look at the power that that game is going to have, too, on the athletes and, and recruiting and getting new people to come in, the video game's huge. We're number one in all of sports. We launched it today. We're number four in all of video games. We're beating, like, FIFA and uh, Call of Duty and games like that. So... You said, you know, Big deal. Obviously, you're planning to go to Europe and get all these Russians and Poland. And, like, is that where you're going to get your super heavyweight crop to maybe fill the league? Yeah. Um, you know, as we're, as we're heading into season two, we're working on all the details right now in season two. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to start bringing in some, some guys from all over the world. I, we, we don't know. Abu Dhabi, season two might be in Abu Dhabi. If not, we're doing season three in Abu Dhabi. So we're trying to figure that all out right now. Is K.O. Chris coming back for the next Power Slap? K.O. Chris will be back, yes. And is there anything you can tease for Power Slap 5? Like, do you have a fight that's already ready to go? Frank, what, 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 anything you want to tease, Frank? <laughs> He's learning quick. <laughs> He's learning quick. Go ahead, brother. Dana, um, you know, tonight we didn't, we didn't have a title match. However, um, you know, one of the most entertaining cards, I think, of the number of cards to date. How does that make you feel to see the talent, um, you know, shine out here tonight without having a title on the line? Yeah, no, tonight was fun. Uh, you know, as we go into these events, like tonight there was no title fights, but this was one of those cards. It was like a fight night. You know, we, we were excited about a few of the fights on the card. The, oh, and were you guys there for the, for the early ones that we did? You guys went there. <laughs> Some of the earlier fights that we did, that, that we taped, because every event we tape fights earlier to kind of see some new up-and-coming talent. What's what? Holy shit. Yeah, there was some, there was some crazy ones earlier, too. But uh, it was a great night. It was awesome. And the numbers were, were fucking great tonight, too. So we're, we're pumped. I mean, we'd love to have an invitation to that, absolutely. Um, but uh, the crazy Hawaiian um, actually came out and said that he would fight his brother. Um, you know, should the numbers be right? Is that how excited would you be for that? I actually feel a little weird about that, uh, <laughs> but that's pretty gangster. Yeah. Um, you said they've been slapping each other their whole life. <laughs> wow. Okay. 
Um, do you know how many, how many slab fighters do you have under contract right now? 100. Okay, amazing. Um, you know, kind of going here into the future, I know we talked about October. I believe they announced on the, on the broadcast that it was going to be October 25th, the next Power Slap event. Right. Can you talk about from now until then? Um, I know last time we spoke, you said you have a, a number of things in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the pipeline. Can you talk about what you have from now until then coming out? Yeah, we just did a... Uh, we, ha we have so much stuff in the pipeline. I mean, I don't talk about deals till they're done. We just did an interview with the Sports Business Journal a couple days ago about the launch of the video game. And then uh, we have so much stuff. <laughs> I, I literally... This thing is growing so fast. Uh, I've never been a part of something so successful in such a short amount of time. So... It's fun, it's exciting, you know, and this is obviously something new for me, and it's something that everybody shit on, which I love too. Um, yeah, it's just, I, I'm loving it. So in the, in the next, what would you say, Frank, the next three, four weeks, we'll be announcing three or four new a, deals. Up, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some big, big news coming up here. With, uh, with the Islam and Charles fight being in Abu Dhabi on the 21st, is there a chance that Power Slap 5 will be in Abu Dhabi? No, no. Uh, season 2 or Season 3 are going to be in Abu Dhabi. We're still trying to figure that out. Okay. Will, will the reality show take the same format as Tough, whereas if you lose, you get eliminated? I don't know. So, obviously, you saw the first season, uh, which was a great season. We're going to make some tweaks and do some things differently uh, on Season 2. So, I don't know yet. Um, we don't even know where we're doing it yet. It's either here or Abu Dhabi, so okay. we'll figure all those details out after we figure out where we're doing it. And yeah, I mean, re recently you guys uh, announced that Meta and the UFC ventured into a partnership, um, you know, in, in, in the metaverse with Horizon World. Do you see this as being a, a business line for you guys to potentially do virtual meet and greets with fighters, um, different things like that? And could we see Power Slap follow along that line? We're working on so much cool shit with this thing right now. I mean, when you think about it, you know, I uh, listen to this. So this thing's six months old. We have two billion views on TikTok. We're number 14 on the platform. We have almost a billion views on YouTube in six months. Let me pull this up for you guys real quick. This, this is crazy, too. Um, I mean, this thing is just such a, uh, you know, I told you about the video game tonight that launched and, and, and the numbers we are on, on that. Then when you get into, so in India, we have 300 million views in India. Asia, excluding China, when I say Asia, I mean Thailand, Vietnam, Japan, South Korea, and Malaysia, 75 million views. Indonesia, 70 million. Brazil, 27 million. Russia, 33 million. The Philippines, 17 million. Mexico, 16 million. Uzbekistan, 14 million. Germany, 11 million. Turkey, 10 million. I could keep going on all night. So when you think about this thing that started six months ago, it's already a global sport. And we're six months in four events. And like we were just saying, we have a lot of big announcements coming up over the next few weeks. Cool. I mean, I, I, it's... I've never been a part of something so successful in such a short amount of time. One, one last one. When you do open it up to, to the world, um, you're already seeing the success of your social numbers. Where do you think it's going to go? And like, how big could that number be for you guys on social? Well, here's the thing. When you think about how big the UFC has become, right? So to be a UFC fighter, you have to train for years to be a UFC fighter. To be a UFC fan, there's a lot of shit you have to learn about the ground game and all these other things. Not a lot to learn about this, and it's fun to watch. And the light, we're, that's the other thing. We're getting sanctioned in 13 different states here coming up soon. So in, we'll, be, we'll be sanctioned in Nevada and 13 other states, and we're going to continue to open up states just like we did the UFC. And right now, to get in here, it's invitation only. So now what's starting to happen is people are starting to reach out and ask how they can come and how they can buy tickets and, and all this other stuff. Our first live gate will be when I travel this thing around and, Take it to other cities. Do you think we'll see that before the, uh, you know, the finale of the Rumble deal? I don't know. I don't know how long. It's, I mean, if you look at what we've done in six months, who knows what we'll do in another six months.
awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Dana, Thanks. over here. Yep. Um, Turpin obviously brings the energy every time he steps up to compete. If you're talking to someone who's never watched Power Slap, is he the first guy you're showing them to try and hook them in? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's an interesting dude, man. Um, what's your question? Like, if, if you're talking to someone who's never watched Power Slap, is he the first guy you're going to show them to try and hook them in? I don't know. I mean, I, I, listen, there's, there's some people that like that. Some people like guys that are humble and quiet. And, you know, I think it's all about the performances, you know. Some of these are, you know, it's knockouts are obviously fun. But then there's the back and forth, like when the Hawaiian was getting hit and staring at him the way that he was. I mean, there's a lot of cool different things about different personalities in, in, in this thing right now. And uh, I wanted to ask you about Jules Scott. His eye looked pretty bad against yeah. his match. And I guess he's good. I didn't see anything. I, hold on. L let me let me look up Jules Scott for you. That's a good one. Um, Jules Scott, 180 days cleared, negative uh, CT orbital bone, minimum 30 days. He's good. For sure. I just got swelled up apparently, and but. And uh, you've made a lot of announcements for these next coming pay-per-view events. Um, I feel like one of the only missing pieces is that co-main event to UFC 295, which people may suggest might be Leon Edwards, Colby. You know when we'll be getting an announcement for that? Soon. Sounds good. Probably next week. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, thank you for another great night. Just two quick ones. Um, we had a, just another awesome event. With the, um, one of the f uh, fights, somebody threw from the crowd, there was like a shirt thrown at one of the guys and your security stopped it. Then we had Forrest Griffin do his thing. How proud of you were like security tonight that really just kept everything together, not letting it get out of control? Yeah, I mean, if, if you look at the way that this thing is set up here, it's sort of a free-for-all in, in this place. I, I let people roll around and shoot content and, and do whatever they want. There's obviously a lot of drinking going on here, so uh, you know, the crowd gets a little rowdy, but that's all part of the fun. This shit show now moves up the Red Rock and this will go on till three in the morning. It's, I love this, man. It's, it's, this has been fun for me. And then last for me, it's not, um, Bernard's not exactly like a CM Punk or Brock Lesnar when they came over, but how exciting is that crossover appeal to where Slap can really? Well, that's what you're going to see. You're going to start seeing athletes now. I mean, you're going to start seeing guys that, as soon as there's real money involved in something, it's when you're going to start to see the guys that are actually athletic coming in and, and uh, you know, like the UFC right now, the level of athlete in here. You got guys in here now that might have played another sport, but because they be fell in love with the UFC and started training in mixed martial arts, this is what they do for a living. And, uh, you know, the more money that comes into this, the, the, the better and better the competition's going to get. Excellent. Can't wait. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming, guys. I appreciate it.